Deja vu, it feels like. Uh, another 6-2 loss in the books for the Coyotes this season. Let's talk about it. Thank you for joining us for the PHNX Coyotes postgame show brought to you by the one and only DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top-rated sportsbook app. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and leave us a five-star review. I'm Leah Merrill here with Craig Morgan and Steve Peters, and uh, I think that one deserves the highest end of the PD size scale. Yeah, you know, um, <laughs> six two again, six two four five games, four times they've given up six goals. Like we talked about it, they, they got to be better defending, and they got a better goaltending, or they're they're gonna have games like this. And as a fan, we want close competitive games. Six two isn't close competitive games. Sorry, it'd be hard pressed to find players who played well today maybe matthias michelli dylan gunther had its moments uh <laughs> can leah do you see do you see fox 2001 his comment uh i know what hk is but can someone explain hk because this is the model of the show today like yep. hktd like this is it probably for the next what i don't know my math is 75 77 77 games it's who cares till draft day like that that just like shut your brain down and just wait until draft day because that's what all of this is about and that's when we're all gonna be happy and have a party and go yay they did it hopefully it, draft day it's not today the thing I would say, you know, today. I remember how hopeless things felt early last season. They they felt this bad. They really did. They did. Almost worse because uh, they didn't have a win yet at this point. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, when I when I look ahead and think, oh God, are they are, are there going to be any bright moments? They're going to be moments like Toronto. There will still be moments where Coyotes fans can can celebrate a win or something exciting. But they're going to be few and far between. I, I, I don't think this team is as good as last year's team. Yeah, it's, it's, something. it's funny because I, I went back and I looked at the first five games of last season and this season because of the large number of, of goals they've been giving up through five. They've given up 26 goals against in five games so far this year. One more than they gave up a year ago. But as Craig pointed out when we were talking before the show, that's eight goals in opening night that they gave up to really put that over the, over the, over the goals against Mark. So this year is even worse. They're giving up more goals this year than they did a year ago. The only difference as Leo pointed out is they have a win. And, and I know, I don't know how many times we're going to say that. I, I really don't know how many times we're going to say, Hey, this team's coming through with a win. I, I, I just, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I agree with Craig. I don't think this team has the offense that the other, that the team did last year. I don't think they have the veteran leadership that we talked about with lad Beagle Roussel um, on the back end, Strawman. I, I don't think this team has that. And you know what else they don't have? The biggest piece that they don't have? The wedgie. Like the veggie wedgie that they pushed each other. They were better when they were a combination. Wedgie made veggie better. Yeah. And, and I think that's the biggest thing lacking right now. Yeah, there's a lot of comments already um, in here in our live YouTube chat uh, talking about like what happened with veggie it feels like he took a, a step backwards this year and a lot of people are saying you know the scouting report is out on him now he has a year done teams know what to expect from him do you feel like that is tr the case and why things are this way or did we just forget that he was also like this last season i i, I said it before the season started that the scouting report was going to be out on him teams will pick apart goalies they figure them out so you have to adjust to what teams are adjusting to. Maybe that will be part of the process for Karel Vimelka. Remember, last season was his first season in the NHL. We're, we're expecting a lot from this guy to be a number one goalie, especially on a team of this caliber. Let's be honest, he's not ready for it. He's not ready for this role in the NHL, but that's, that's the situation right now, and I do think teams have a better read on him. So 
that's part of the reason I don't think this team is going to be as good. I don't think the goaltending is good as as good as it was last year. And there are plenty of other areas for concern as well. I mean, we, Nick Schmaltz is out of the lineup for a long period of time. It, it wasn't as long last year. So they're, they're missing a key piece up front. They have the same issues they've had with the forward group. And that, this blue line, man, Shane Gosses bear is giving them something offensively. JJ Mosier has had his moments. Aside from that, guys, I mean, Dyson Mayo, to me, looks like an AHL defenseman right now. He's looked like it since the season began. Yeah, and the other thing we talk about the goals against, Greg, is they can't continually give up 30-plus shots, and it's 32 again tonight. I mean, you go 53, 43, 30. I mean, you can't. And, and the way Vimelka's playing, he played better last year when he had 40. 45 shots he was better when he had more work than he was we statistically showed that when he had under 30 his numbers were just different and it's not the same i i don't think you feel like oh my gosh wow he's keeping him in the game i thought there were some big saves at the end of the first period um unfortunately the team as they have started to trend to do this year they don't start the first 10 minutes of this game like i don't know if they need to go out when they before the anthem starts just to, to start playing. Maybe they can drop the puck before the anthem and the Coyotes can start the game 10 minutes earlier than the opponent. So they're ready to play when the game actually starts. But the first 10 minutes you're behind two, nothing again makes it too hard. And, and here's the other thing. I'm going to go my little rant, Craig. So you can, if you need a water break or go to the bathroom, this is the time. Um, stop turning the puck over. Could, could we start making the game really simple until you start to win or have success, simplify the game. And what does that mean? It means get over the goddamn red line and dump the puck in and then go get it, right? Get the puck out of your zone, bang it off the glass. And I'm going to show you because I this is my demo period PD's of the puck day talk today. Live. And this is how the game started today. This is how the game started. McBain takes the puck, and where does he throw the puck? From now on, I'm the coach. Guess what? This is my defensive zone. I put lines right through the red line. And guess what you do? You cannot, you are not, you are not allowed or you will not play if you take a puck and pass it into the middle of the ice. If you're over here and you pass it in over here, you are not going to play because all they've done is turn the puck over in there and it's gone back at their net. It's happened the last five games where they turn the puck over in the middle of the ice all the way up to the blue line. So what we're going to do now, here's the rules, guys. When we come up and we're breaking out of zone, it's going off the glass and out or you're going to skate it up to the red line and dump it in. And when you're giving up six goals a game, every game, you need to simplify the game. They turn the puck over, I don't know how many times again tonight, inside the middle of the ice. And if you turn the puck over in the middle of the ice on a team that doesn't defend particularly well with goaltending that is below average, you are going to give up goals. Okay. Yeah. And Jack Mains is a, a young now. guy, right? He's a young player, so he's going to make mistakes. But there is... There is no world of upper level hockey where you make the pass that he made, especially with how soft it was. I mean, there was yeah. nothing on it. So, I mean, but you know what? That's my point, Craig. And that there should be a rule. There should be a, a young player like that. He should have absolutely no doubt in his head when he's coming out of that. Oh, good grief. If I throw the puck in the middle of the ice, I'm going to be in trouble. So, in his head, in practice tomorrow, every drill is get the puck off the glass and out or carry it through those dots. Do not, in our zone, do not throw the puck from the dots in the middle of the ice, period. So when he has the puck in that spot tomorrow, he goes, oh, I'm not going to throw in the middle of the ice because you know what? I'm not supposed to. And so then we'll go off the glass. And guess what? Going off the glass and out and getting out to the red line is better than giving it up in the middle of the ice for a shot on net. It just is. So until you start winning and you're the New York Rangers, guess what? Watch the New York Rangers when they play in their game. They've got a game, I think, Tuesday against Colorado. Watch them play. They're going to zip that puck through the middle of the ice the entire game. Their players are more skilled. They were in the Eastern Conference Finals last year, and that is a really good hockey team. Okay, you're veteran guys. Throw the puck through the middle of the ice because guess what? They've shown they can do that. Right now, the Coyotes have not, so don't. Just don't. Simplify yeah. the game. Off the glass and out, over the red and in. That's it. Yeah. Let's play that way, and let's play 3-2. Uh, and Nicholas I'm sorry, Leah. I leave no, you're, from here on out. No, 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 you're good. Um, Nicholas said a tanking team cannot afford to play fancy or make careless mistakes. These turnovers have been brutal, and he's right. And PD, while on, on the tail of your rant, I want to pull up your keys from today because every single key the Coyotes did not hit on, which is why the game ended the way it did. Um, no turnovers, number one. That's literally right what we just talked about. The start of the game. Uh, alarm clock start on time. Uh, <laughs> yep. Didn't go well. And then top line stay hot. I mean, Clayton Keller did score 
kind of. I mean, he got a goal shot the board. puck yeah. <laughs> and it went yeah. in. <laughs> but but you, you know what? That's okay. And uh, when your team is offensively challenged, get the puck at the net. If it bounces off feet, feet. I don't know if that was, yeah. Bounces <laughs> off feet or knees or shin pads, fine. But you got to get the puck to the net. That's I thought so that line was, that, that line has been playing better and, and they just needed to continue to do that. Absolutely. But you're right. I think the keys, and again, we can say every night, it's key number four, just bookmark it, is the goaltending has to be elite. Elite. And I mean, well above average for this team. And, and it's funny, the only game that they win, they give up less than 30 shots. Hmm. And they control the puck more. Hmm. Hmm. Food for thought. Food for thought. Well, let's take a look at today's game by the numbers. Um, it was funny when I edited this graphic, I didn't even have to change the six to two final score. I just kept it the exact same. Uh, Coyotes allowed 32 shots by Ottawa. They had 22 shots on goal themselves. The faceoffs were uneven, heavily in Ottawa's favor. Um, in terms of blocks, 15 blocks for the Coyotes, 11 for Ottawa. And then the Coyotes power play, I mean, they've now had success in four of their five games so far. Um, so that's remaining to be a positive, but Ottawa did manage to score on the power play against the Coyotes today. Are there any stats here that stand out to either of you? Uh, I mean, the face-off percentage is brutal, and that's not going to help either, but I, it, there's, there's just so many that you can pick apart in this game. I don't know that I can even lean on one stat or another to say this was the key in the game. It was just, it was abject failure. They, they, they were just beaten all over. And, and look, even when they got close, then Vamoka gives up those two, in my opinion, soft goals. And suddenly it's, it, it's five, two, it's not a one goal game anymore. It's a three goal game and the game's over. So in those instances where your team does manage to claw back, you always got to make a save. You got to make a save to keep your team, give your team a chance. And he, he gave up two softies. Yeah. And, and there was that time in the second period and this has been, you know, the Coyotes have been consistent in having bad starts and allowing six goals, but they've also been consistent in having strong second periods, um, which is the opposite of what it felt like it was last year. Um, so at that, uh, in the second period, when it was three, two, I thought, okay, this is a game they've come back. Um, and, they're competitive. And I said, I even said in our members only discord, I'll take a one goal game all season long. And, and that second period felt, it just felt better. Like, I don't care if the Coyotes are going to lose every game. If it's a one goal game, it's just the sloppiness that ha that unfolded in the third and the sloppiness to start every single game. That is just makes it really hard to watch. Did you see Albert? Someone must've changed the locks because the Yotes keys aren't working. <laughs> 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 and you're right that second period it shows they can play with them it, it to your point Leah, they don't they don't have to win the games they just have to compete and skate with these teams the shots were 10 to 8 in the second period and the score was two to one yotes so they can skate with these teams but we've we've talked about it a lot they have to play mistake free they have to play more simple <laughs> hockey where they they give up that have the chance to make fewer mistakes. And, and I, I, I'm just not sure they're doing that. They just need to simplify and, you know what, hang on for some of these games and just make the game a little bit easier. And guess what? If you lose those kind of games, fine. I, I, I think we're all accustomed to and used to having this team lose. And we're all like, okay, it's going to happen. But I didn't feel like, I, I didn't feel like for the first and third, there was, there was the compete, the, the effort. And did you see the last 10 seconds of the game? Mm -hmm. and, and I know the score is 6-2. I get it, but did you see Ottawa just passed the puck around? No one yeah. took a shot on net on the power play. Like, yeah. Shooting on the power play. Yeah, yeah, that's it's, it's Wait, almost like Murphy, right? it's like a little kids. You're the, you're like, like the mercy the, rule. Yeah, yeah, it's like the mercy rule. Yeah. Let's just throw it around like the Harlem Globetrotters around you for the last good on them because they don't need to make it seven two. So there's that point of it too. But on the other hand, I'm watching that film going, really? That's how you're treating me right now? You're just gonna pass it? Mm -hmm. Really? That's what we're gonna do. So that's where you go. You just you want to push back. Yeah, and I guess you know they they had two. Did they have two fights tonight? Am I was I dreaming, or just yeah. one? Oh, yeah. There were there were two scuffles. Oh, they called it. They called well, it. Yeah, the, yeah. Rough. Liam, yeah, Liam yeah. O'Brien uh, got into it today with uh, Arizona born. What's his name, Craig? Mark Castellick. Yeah, a lot of Arizona representation in this game with him, and I know Brady Kachuk also born in Arizona. Um, We've been very negative, so I just want to be positive for a few minutes, and then we can go back to ripping everything apart. Um, but Dylan <laughs> Gunther, Swift. 
yeah, we'll get to that later. Stay tuned for some hot takes. Um, <laughs> Dylan Gunther scored his first NHL goal. Yes. Um, I mean, that's a moment every player dreams of their entire lives. And when that happened, the first thought I had was, this is the first of many. Dylan Gunther has been a goal scorer in the WHL. Obviously, you know, he's not necessarily an everyday Coyotes player yet, um, but it was really great to see him get his first NHL goal. And that is why we have crowned Dylan Gunther today's Giraffe Kings King of the Game for his first NHL goal. So if I had a applause sound effect, I would play it now. But this was a big positive from today's game. Fantastic. Yeah, and and you know what? Second, right? Yeah, he had the breakaway in the third, and, and, and I wasn't even sure that was him. Like, whoa, was that guy? Where did that guy come flying through the middle for a breakaway? It was Dylan Gunther. And it, it's just unfortunate that off the very next rush, Kachuk goes the other way and scores on a breakaway. But but Gunther, he, what he did on that power play is he finds, and, and you hear, if you hear the Coyotes broadcast, you hear Tyson Nash say the quiet area all the time. But if, if you go back and get a chance to look at that Gunther goal, if he stands right in the middle of the slot area between the hash marks, the defender is going to be able to get him even on the power play. So he gets away from that area. So that guy can't go all the way over to, to him. And the guy on the strong side has to protect the point shot. So he's, he's all by himself. He really found that area of ice that no one was able to cover. He, that's what goal scorers do. They find that area where they can't defend against him. And he got the shot off that he wanted to get. He got the top shelf shot from in tight. That's how he scores goals in the Western league. That was fantastic. And that was, that was a Dylan Gunther goal. What did you guys call that PD? Just finding good ice, finding that quiet. Yeah, spot you find the right find the spot. find good ice. We call it good yeah. ice. You find yeah. the good ice, and I and he. Gonna, go ahead. No, and, and you saw that again. Even on five on five, their ability to do that—that's where you get your scoring chances. You've got to find it, and it's not just the same place on the ice every single time. It's an area of the ice that you know that they're not going to defend. And if someone is standing there to defend it, you need to move and find the good ice somewhere else. See, that's why you see so much activity and players moving is because that gets the defense moving, which opens up holes on the ice, which gives you an opportunity to shoot and score. Uh, Dylan Gunther was good tonight. That was a big, big boost for his confidence. Um, let's see when he gets a second. And more importantly, Craig, Leah, is he going to be here in seven games? Yeah, somebody just asked if this changes the situation. The one game is not going to change anything, but it's part of the evaluation. He's four games in now. Is it four? Yeah, it's four games in now. So they've got five more to play with, assuming he's playing in Columbus because they don't have any extra forwards. So that's that's five right there. And then you come home for that four-game homestand, and then it's decision time. I'm, I'm really curious what they're going to do here. We've talked about it a million times already. I don't know. I think there are a lot of arguments to sending Dylan Gunther back to juniors this year, not the least of which is financial. Why, why would you burn the first year of his ELC for this train wreck of a season? I don't get it. I really don't get it. They have said that they want prospects to overbake. They also have said, however, that if a guy earns it, he's going to get that chance. So it's, this is a tough decision, but PD, you were around for all of those previous instances. Yeah, where done it before. Rush guys, rush guys to the NHL and it, it ended up being to their detriment. I, I, I want to be very careful with Dylan Gunther. It's you get excited. He scores a goal. You get excited and you go, oh, yeah. maybe it's time. And we've saw it. I mean, I could get the list out again, but it's it's so long. Why bother? What you want to think about is what you said about that that long that ELC contract. When you look on the other side of the ice and you see Kachuk and Stutzel and Batherson and the young talent they have in in Ottawa, that's what you want this Arizona Coyote team to be in two and three years. And you want to be able to hold on to a player like Gunther when it matters. It doesn't matter now. Like it doesn't matter. Right. You're not going to the playoffs. You're not making a run. So let's keep that three years. Let's keep that extra year because yeah, it matters. It matters. when he's playing out there with Connor Geeky and he, he's got the, the and you know Connor the, Bedard, Connor Bedard <laughs> from, from and Logan Cooley and Austin Matthews and there Austin Matthews comes in. Now we've finished it. Yeah, <laughs> once a <laughs> show. But that's but that's where yeah. you want him to to flourish. Not necessarily right now. You don't need him to flourish now. You know, the other thing that Bill Armstrong said about that, too, is just because he's scoring in the first 10 games of the season doesn't mean he's scoring in the next 10 because the NHL, as we know, gets harder and harder as the season progresses. Teams ramp it up, so it gets more and more difficult. So I don't know if that's him tipping his hand or or just pointing out a truth of the NHL, but it's another thing to consider when, like you said, Petey, when getting excited about the fact that Dylan Gunther scored a goal. 
Yeah, but yeah. you want to get excited about things. I get it. Like when you're having a tough season <laughs> and things are going to get bad. Excited about, yeah. Let's get excited about something. I get it. And you go, hey, the fans can can grab on to Gunther. And honestly, it might come down to that. They need some positive. We need something to hold on to. We need something to cheer for. Maybe Gunther's it. I I, I don't know. That's I, our I something know. today, at least. Like I'm exactly. not. I'm not looking look today. Chat. Look who's in the chat. You see who's in the chat? Graham Taylor's in the chat. Look What's up, that. Graham? Graham Golden said, Canuck. "We got to read it. That's long." See, that's Graham, a, said, that's way too Graham long. said, "Why would you put Gunther through a season like this? Losing sucks. The play is terrible. Don't let him absorb that losing culture." Either. The biggest point of that is Edmonton Oilers. When you have all those high draft picks that sucked, they learned to lose. They got accepted with losing. They were more concerned with what their points were and what they were doing individually because the team was miserable. That can happen here very easily if you put these young players through that year after year where losing is is the norm and losing. It's not okay, but it becomes what you're used to. It's hard to learn to win. So there, I, I agree 100% with Graham said. I don't see the point. I really don't see the point. Let him go run for the Memorial Cup, be the captain, lead the league in scoring, all of those great things. He can do this again next year. And now when he does it next year, he's already got a goal in the National Hockey League. You don't think that's going to make him more confident and ready to play a year from now? Okay. Well, and that's exactly it too. For him to go back down, he'll take away, he'll have that confidence that he scored. And I think I mentioned this before, but he can now walk away having nine games under his belt if that's what he ends up getting to and he can now know what he needs to work on. He's had that experience and now he can, you know, prepare for that playing in the WHL prepare for that next summer. So we'll see what happens with Dylan Gunther. Um, he was our DraftKings king of the game today. And if you want to make some money on DraftKings, head on over to the DraftKings Sportsbook app and make any $5 NBA money line bet. And if you're a new customer, you can get $200 in bets if your team wins you can also boost your winnings up to 100 percent with DraftKings stepped up same game parlays it's simple download the DraftKings sportsbook use promo code phnx that's code phnx on the DraftKings sportsbook app minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply see show notes for details and uh, usually we send it to sean for our DraftKings pick of the week sean is actually back home in buffalo for a few days so our next man up pd <laughs> yeah <laughs> what's Oof. your DraftKings pick See, of the week if i'm doing a DraftKings pick of the week i would just advise people to maybe do the opposite of what i say because <laughs> that's usually what happens on my DraftKings pick of the week but i'm going to baseball i'm going to the playoffs and i'm going to the nlcs i'm going to philadelphia where mike clevenger is on the mound tonight for the padres and i'm taking the padres on the road to even this series they're minus 105 so i'm taking the padres and the money line minus 105 to even the nlcs in philadelphia Wow. And that's I your like DraftKings pick of the week. I like I it. I need to Peter. shout out Karen McKenzie because she did point out that these uh, these scores that the Coyotes are losing by feel like tennis sets at this point. <laughs> yeah. So <three> <laughs> <about> four <laughs> steps to one right now. Karen McKenzie, who also is my uh, nutter butter donor. So Yes, she is. Yeah, that's she is. Uh, <laughs> hopefully you guys we'll... want to know where those nutter butters went, don't you? I, I did see the hiding spot, though. I will say that. I did. I know where the hiding spot I is. You. I showed you. I trust you, Petey. Yeah, yeah, we're trusted, unlike Michaela and Max, but that, you know, we already have that. So or no, Espo you know at this point. Espo True, just Espo did, did uh, call you out on his show live, so. Yeah, Woo. Well, he ate the cookies in front of me. He ate it live on his show. Any, anywho. Well, we're um, talking well, young players, Leah. Can I say one more thing? Or are we doing yes. more work? Did you have to work well, first? Well, I have one more thing to say. So okay. do you want to hold that thought? Yep. Okay. Put a pin uh, in it, <laughs> A lot of people here in our chat um, are here with us every pack therapy in our members only discord. And whether this is your first time watching our show or your hundredth time watching, we're going to have an event on Friday and we hope all of you will come out to four peaks for the official Coyotes tailgate and watch party for the home opener against the Winnipeg Jets. Whether you have tickets to the game or not, you can come. If you have tickets, come tailgate the game. It's really it's a really short distance to Mall Arena from Four Peaks. Or if you don't have tickets and you want to watch it with Coyotes fans on a 20-foot projector screen, which is an amazing viewing experience with great food and drink, by the way, um, join us out at Four Peaks. PD and I are going to hang out before the game. Um, there's going to be drink specials, the $3 beers, giveaways, etc. So join us out at Four Peaks. And also, if you can't make that or you want to make both, make two trips to Four Peaks this week, we'll be there on Wednesday for four peaks wednesday as well um, and if you're going to drink you must be 21 or older and enjoy responsibly but i'm really looking forward can we that. just stay there leah from wednesday to friday 
Sure. Like, if, like there's a, if they, could we hide behind in the back there? Maybe they wouldn't mm-hmm. notice we're there. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to. It's haunted. It's, if you've been it on is? the haunted That's brewery right. tour, I I'm not that. spending the night there. Never mind. Heck but we no. We might find the the pumpkin cheesecake, and then it's all over the pumpkin pork oh, cheesecake. Yeah. Absolutely. We could probably Absolutely. survive in there for a couple of days. I think we'd be. Okay. Oh, hundred percent. You think Craig can make the chicken tendies? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I trust you, Craig, at the fryer. <laughs> could be frightening. I don't know about a fryer, buddy, but uh, you know my my. Chicken enchiladas went over pretty well uh, at the party, buddy. They did, and Craig's like ingenious packaging of them in little uh, foils. You can lift them up. Oh, foil handles. That's foil right. handles. Mm-hmm. That is and a, that your is corn, absolute your, dad move. Your is it cornbread muffins that you always make? Cornbread muffins. Those yeah. are so All good. homemade. I drizzled a box of pizza. Oh, just they're so good. There. All right. Drizzled anyway, uh, yeah. PD, <laughs> what? Were no, you I just want to talk about another young player that we're going to be excited about was Michelli, Matias Michelli yeah. tonight, who gets an assist yeah. on the goal, on the power play goal. I thought again he had moments. Let's not annoy him yet. There were moments when he, you know, he showed a skill. I mean, his his ability to change directions quick on his feet uh, in tight areas, control the puck, make plays. Um, I thought he had a really good game. I thought mm-hmm. that's another guy that. Maybe we don't. We talked about a lot last season. Maybe we haven't talked about enough this year. I think he's a guy that's going to be there when they come through the other side of the tunnel. So I, I keep your eye on Matias Michelli. He's a high end skill guy that hopes to be a part of this when when they get through the rebuild. Yeah. Got an assist tonight on the Gunther goal too. Nice. So yeah, we talked about Michelli the other night um, against the Canadians. He was noticeable then, uh, noticeable again tonight. So he yeah, like you said, he's another exciting player he had a really good scoring chance in the third period i thought as well so he continues uh, to make his presence known a couple other notes on this game before we get to the much anticipated pop music debate that people in the chat are already asking about <laughs> but T- coach Rini seems to constantly be juggling the lines do you have any thoughts or takes on lines that are either clicking or not clicking? Obviously, it's unfortunate that Schmaltz is out, so that disrupts the yeah. Boyd Keller Schmaltz, you know, magic that we saw last season. But I don't know. Also, a lot of people in the Discord today were saying it was weird to see Hayton on the fourth line with O'Brien. So I just didn't know if you either of you had thoughts on how the lines have been going. I just think he's trying to find something, anything that works. It's 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 as simple as that. When you get beat six two, you gotta try something else and they juggle the lines and well, this mix didn't work either. Um, Farad Hayton really hasn't carried over his preseason guys. Um, it's, we might as well say it at this point, we're five games in again, still a small sample and there's plenty of time for him to get his act together, but he hasn't been very good. No, he's got no he points through five. Good. He's got no points. He's minus eight. Um, but it's not what we expected. We we all sat here, and I'm guilty as everybody, saying he was going to take a step forward, and this is his year, and we said he's a breakout player, and all of those things we said from his his playing training camp, he's lighter, he's quicker, he's all of those things we said were true. I, I mean, I understand what he's playing on the fourth line right now. He's not he's not contributing to the offensive side of the puck. McBain's driving the net. You notice McBain when he's got the puck. Those are things that Barrett Hayton is expected to be doing right now, and he's not. I mean, Andre's, you got to play the guys that are playing. And right now, Barrett Hayton's not providing the offense that you had hoped he would. Maybe playing with these guys with a little bit more size and strength down there. Maybe they can dig some pucks out and he can be the guy that's the skilled guy in the line and maybe he can get on the scoreboard. I hope he gets out of the funk because this preseason for him was very, very strong. I thought he played really well. I thought he was one of the best players in, in, in preseason. Unfortunately, that has not translated in the first five games of this season. Yep. Um, I'll just remind everybody that I called Michelli for the breakout year. So uh, we've seen seen him a little bit more maybe um, so far this season. <laughs> I, I honestly, my short-term memory is so bad. I already forgot. I, was, yeah. Was also, it it's, it's been for that. <laughs> no, just, sorry. sorry. <laughs> sorry yeah. Also, it's only been five games. Uh, Fox 2001 said, any update on Chikrin? Uh, Craig has one actually. Yeah, I tweeted it. Um, he's week to week still. Uh, he's not going to play on this trip, and it sounds like he's a little ways away still. So we'll see. But definitely not playing on this trip. He is with the team. That's it. That's all there is to say there. Hmm. Although I've I've heard again that hmm. trade trade talks are heating up, according to some national media sources. <laughs> he's not going to get traded until he plays, is he? Like, is that really is that I really a possibility? Like trade talks heated up because he crossed the Canadian border. That's of why. course. Suddenly, it's like everybody, everybody just 
their their d- still like radars went off that Dylan Gun or not Dylan Gunther, sorry, Jacob Chikrin entered that Canadian airspace and do they have a passport alert when when he crosses the Canadian border? <laughs> yeah, the, the right Canadian TSN. border services. Yeah. TSN like, CBC. alerts every Chikrin's here. <laughs> Chikrin's here. And maybe. Maybe. Like, I don't know. Like, oh, like they're about to go to Columbus but, but so he, things will die down again. And and we can talk about him. Like maybe I'm wrong and I'm the idiot, but I don't think he's going to trade until he plays. Like, would you bet your future as a GM? Would you bet your future players and draft picks on a player that has has not played this season and missed no. most of the end of last season? Nope. Hmm. I, I would say no. Yeah. I would say no. Uh, yeah. So that's the update. And Craig, one other question for you. I saw this in our Discord earlier. Is there any update on Valamaki's visa status? Because he was able to play these games because he it was they were in Canada, but they're going back to the U.S for tuesday's game do you have any update i don't have an update yet but i will okay. check before the columbus game to see if he's allowed to play i would hope that by now they would have had that sort yeah of time they spent in canada but I'll, I'll check on that let's hope okay. so I, I thought he's been a bright spot on the back end i thought he's moved the puck well i thought he skated well i i haven't minded him on the back end at all yep there we go any two cents any other notes from today's game before we move on to our much anticipated pop music debate no, just wanted to give a shout out to ASU hockey for a big win last night yeah. over Colorado College, yeah. though. That was, I mean, they've been How searching was it, Craig? for it. Craig, uh, what did you think of Mullet? Did you know the Mullet? I loved it. I absolutely loved it. With the band? The band, the student section, just, just the whole vibe of that place is incredible. Yeah. Cool. First guy I see when I walk in last night, Petey, was Mike Barnett. See? I no told way. Behind a pillar just turns and looks at me. Yep. Told you. <laughs> anybody who's anybody, there you go. Uh, yeah. Last DC. week, I walked in the concourse, and, I, and the first person I see is Shane Doan. Yeah, he there was there again last <laughs> night. Whole, whole Doan crew was there last night in their suite. Ray Whitney was there. Dougie Waite was in town because his son plays for Colorado College. So That's awesome. Wow. A lot of big wigs in the, the, in the arena last night. That's awesome. So, That's really cool. Yeah. And they're playing against fun tonight. atmosphere, but they scored five goals, which is they've been, they've been searching for their offense. It's been missing, yeah. but they got to figure out how to – sweep a team at home especially but it, they look much better other than a stretch where they took a bad penalty they look pretty dominant last night and that's the team that i thought Good we might them. see more often this season so maybe they're coming around yeah well Can they I... do play they do play oh what were you gonna say pd Sorry. no i just no we finished your thought on ASU. i was gonna talk to fernando in, in the chat oh yeah no just a simple no just a simple no yeah, you no. want to know? Fernando, no. no. Just no. It's fine. You no. joined at a perfect time, Fernando. No. Truly. We're just about done talking <laughs> about the game and you didn't miss it. No, no need to Don't look worry. at the highlights. Nope. Just move You're along. Good. You're good. Nothing to uh, see here. <laughs> if ASU does play again tonight, if you want to get a look at Mullet Arena, if you haven't already, or you want to catch some, you know, competitive hockey here in Arizona, uh, you can go to that game. There's Tickets available now on the Game Time app, and it's always cheaper when you buy a day of game. You can save up to 60% when you buy last minute. So if you're on the fence about going to that game, there's still time to grab tickets and get down to Tempe. Um, and the best way to support us is by buying your tickets through the link in our description of either this YouTube stream or, or if you're, wherever you listen to your audio podcasts as well. And if you're you know, thinking about the Coyotes home opener or any Coyotes game this season, Game time is the place to buy your tickets. And if you want to get decked out in Arizona sports gear, check out FOCO. They have the best Arizona merchandise with officially licensed gear for men, women, and kids. And everything from bobbleheads to swimsuits to Crocs. And this week they have brand new Cardinals hoodies for the Cardinals fans out there. PD and Craig, I have to say I'm a little disappointed. Our first at-home show of the season and you did not wear your Snuggies, but that's okay. There's, there's going to be more opportunity. I talked about it's it today. It's still warm. It's still warm, to be it fair. It is. It's cooling off tomorrow, actually. But it, I know. This is like our last really hot day for a while. Yeah. Before we move off. Day, like 80s, right? Hot. It was like 89, be- I think. Yeah. Before we move off from Snuggies, Leah, yeah. no lie, I did say to my my wife, I said, we do have Snuggies, right? And unfortunately, we have kind of a, this internal rule at PHNX not to wear other teams' oh. logos. And it, it turns out one of the Snuggies is my son and his rooting interest when he was like 10 and one of them is my wife and her rooting interest so unfortunately they don't qualify to be on air well i'll I'll go i'll go buy you a hoodies on foco leah leah do you want me to turn off my camera for a moment and go get my snuggie on is it is it logo approved it's 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 a cardinal snuggie no way no let's let's save it let's save it for another show let's bring him to studio 
I have one that I think is logo approved. Yeah, we could so do that too. Studio. Um, if, you wanna, if you want to grab like a Cardinals hoodies, which PD, it sounds like you need a Cardinals I do need one, a hoodies with a Z. Go to, <laughs> Z in go to foco.com. That's F-O-C-O. <laughs> and for all non-presale items, use the promo code PHNX to get 10% off. Um, for, Fernando said, thanks, PHNX, for always keeping it light, always sending love to the Valley from the Lone Star State. Thank you so much. Wow, uh, nice. Yotes come to Dallas the day before my birthday, hoping to see some of the pack out here. Love it. Very nice. Um, and Karen said, perfect day to watch ASU swimming. True. Wow. It is like that perfect warm, but not too hot weather. And then Roaring Fork said, we're all here for Taylor. We'll have no fear, Roaring Fork. We're going to get into it right now. See, <laughs> um, Taylor, this is where I grabbed the newspaper. Like, well, I'm not. It's like, not just about Taylor Swift. Tape. Did you see what? Okay. Well, I'll just this, all, this all came up because Taylor Swift's new album came out this week and I if wish Sean want. was here, first of all, if you saw Sean too. on Southwest yeah. Bias this week or like on any ASU show ever, he is very opinionated on this subject. Um, and it just got, you know, us thinking about pop stars and what makes someone a pop star. They qualify if they're overrated or underrated. So we're going to get to Taylor Swift in a second, but Craig has sent quite the list of uh artists i guess you can say and yeah. we're gonna go through them craig do you want to explain what we're doing here yeah first of all you know, obviously taylor swift's new album it CD, dropped what do we call now what do we call it now it's an album okay but it's not really an album because an album is this it's a collection of songs thing. <laughs> i'm with you craig <laughs> okay but anyway taylor swift's new album is out and it clearly has has been getting a lot of hype and a lot of people are at, like apoplectic losing their minds over the fact that taylor swift's new album is out we'll get to all that in a minute but it, it just got me thinking like where does taylor swift rank in the pantheon of pop musicians all time i have my own opinions obviously and, and of course there's a definition of pop music too that some people may disagree on pop pop art has like been around since the mid 50s i think when the 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 uh term was coined and it has to do as much with like mass production and uh it and profit right it, it, it's it's for profit it's it's a simpler form of art it's not it's not high art it's not sublime art it's not we're not talking about like great artists here pop musicians are what they are they're entertainers it's simple structure it's sim simple music period so and that's okay a lot of it's fun i like a lot of pop music but let's not mistake it for Again, like 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 this is this is one of the most important musicians of our time. No, pop musicians do not qualify for that. Sorry, but there have been some great pop musicians in the course of music history. Of course, PD and I have been around for all of that history. So we're going to go through some of those artists right now. Leah has the photos. OK, I'm just going to go in the order I have them in here. Uh, so we'll start with chronological. Sir uh, Elton John. Thoughts, PD? On what? If he's a pop pop star? Does, no. Does he belong in the pantheon of great <laughs> pop artists? Pop yeah, artists? like at the top. Like, I, I, yes, everything he says is and sings from how many ever years he qualifies for decades. Yes, not even close. No discussion. Elton John's a legend in my mind. Elton John is a pop legend in my mind. Yep. And and part of this too, like for me, is a lot of pop music is just formulaic, right? It's just okay. Like I think it was multi-syllabic words when he gets on these things. Like, I gotta sorry, sorry. I think it was Quincy Jones that said it about hip hop. It's just rhymes, beats, and loops. It's just simple. Did and that's, just again, walk that's away? Okay, but we're not talking about some incredibly creative, complex music that people are writing. Nah, they're writing for profit, and they have formulas out there. They know what what you like now. They know what sounds and and vibes you like, and they create the music so that you'll buy it and they make money. That's the truth of the music industry these days. But if you're going to do it, do it like Elton John, because he's he's one of the best in the history of pop music, in my opinion. All right. Well, let's move on to our next one. And that is Queen Latifah. Mm. Anybody have thoughts on this other than me? I feel like I wasn't around for... Like I know her more as an actress than an artist, and I know she was. I know she is an artist, but I just know her. Yeah, but you more have to spin the actress. clock way back to where she was a musical artist. You're right, Leah. She's more widely known now as an actress. 
like, like a woman coming into to hip hop, right? To, to rap. It was, it was rare at the time. She was a groundbreaker. And by the way, I should also mention since she's not here. Yeah. Tara bought her CDs. Tara right, did the Queen Latifah CDs. Ladies first. Ladies first. Love it. PD. Need more nothing. energy from you guys. Yeah. I got nothing on that one. Okay. Well, let's move on. Uh, here's someone who's more in my uh, generation. Lady Gaga. Uh -huh. Hmm. Leah, you go first on this one. Um, I mean, I think she's she. What makes Lady Gaga unique, and it's not. You're so right about you know the formulaic music because it's not necessarily that her music is the most groundbreaking, but like she herself is an icon. Kind of like how Elton John, it, he just has this personality that's bigger than himself. That's how I feel about Lady Gaga, um, and she's an icon and. and it, it's like I think what you make a significance when you create cultural shifts and I feel like Lady Gaga has done that wow that's deep and actually extremely <laughs> accurate that was really good <laughs> yeah but that's that's Madonna it's Michael Jackson it's it's like they're iconic hey, 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 I, I would throw this, her I would list. throw her in on that so yeah no yeah, question I right? don't know her music that well though sorry but the theatrical part of her performance as well right Leah I mean her performances are unbelievable there's so much so much to that as well. She's she's an entertainer as much as she is a musician. She's also got a phenomenal voice, by the way, which came through when she did the movie with Bradley Cooper, A Star Is Born, the like third or fourth remake of A Star Is Born. But I thought it was really good, and her voice is just unbelievable. Yeah, uh, Roaring Fork said Gaga is like her own genre. It's yeah. True. Wow. Um, okay, well, let's run through a couple of these because they just came up. So we have uh, Madonna. We got the original that Gaga. photo, by the way. Yeah, the original Gaga, Gaga before Gaga. Was yeah, Gaga. yeah, that's a good assessment. Yeah, I, I had a picture that. of I had a picture of Michael Jackson. I don't know where it went, um, but he is part of this list. Um, yeah. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna throw up a few so we can run through them. Uh, David Bowie. Hmm. Elvis. Oh. And no the Beatles. Ooh. <laughs> Beatles are, are arguably the greatest uh, pop musicians of all time. They're great on the four check, too. I, I don't want to say <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I get, boy, could they kill a penalty. Like, I have no oh idea. Yeah, great music. Ha had them on cassette and albums. Got it. I get it. I got, got it. Hmm. There's the, the, the difference, though, Craig, when you and I grew up, there were less defined genres of music than there are now. They're so niche now that there are so many different categories and clicks of, of music because of things like Spotify and Apple Music. They're so like Jackson listens to music all day long that he thinks are famous artists. Literally, I've never heard of any of them. Like, And yeah. they probably they probably sell their music to 20 or 30 people. But he's one of those 20, 30 that loves that music. So it's so segmented now because anybody and yeah. if you the three of us really want to get on and and put out some music on spotify we probably could put out some by tomorrow just saying so it just becomes an easier way to deliver music to the fan base it becomes more segmented there becomes less of the pop star mystique and mythos because you don't have one general outlet to gather your music some of these some of these comments uh caleb said the beatles are kings of producing absolute garbage music that's a hot caleb, take caleb. caleb probably started drinking at noon so like yeah. this, <laughs> that's caleb. not a hot take oh, that's buddy. a terrible take that's caleb. a terrible take. uh beatles charles like caleb. the beatles introduced like world music like george harrison bringing in other music from other parts of the world now the, the beatles are groundbreaking get out okay. of here chris is, now chris goes way back yeah, oh, so, so Chris says Tony Bennett. I want to read some of the ones that are in the comments Covered here. Uh, Charles said, "Good." Charles said, "Billy Joel, Fernando saying uh, oh. Justin Timberlake, um, JT, are we riot?" Roaring Fork said, "Weird Ali Yankovic." <laughs> um, yeah. So you know, lots of and for in Isaiah is listing actors in Star Wars. I'm not sure where <laughs> we went there, but uh, <laughs> Joel. Oh, Queen. Nicholas said, "Queen." No question. No, no question. question. So that brings us to this point. Yeah, we've listed all these greats, right? And so that wasn't the bit. We haven't even started the bit yet. We haven't oh, even started. Great. If you want to leave, you are more than all of big setup for Leah. Just it's all a big setup to talk about Taylor Swift and where she fits in with these legends. And Craig, I'm just gonna give it to you first, and then you I'll go on my little. This ride. one to me. Come on. This is your moment, Leah. This is your moment. Oh, Katie's what is happening? Katie <laughs> will be right back. I, why don't you just take yourself off the screen? Oh, God. 
<laughs> what is happening? Oh my god. Okay, here's the thing. I think Taylor Swift is talented. I think she's built an unbelievable. PD is now frozen. I'm not yeah, sure what happened. Frozen blurred there. too. So, yeah, that's yeah. okay. Um, <laughs> she's built an unbelievable career for herself. I think she, uh, you know, I I support you know like a woman like her carving the career that she has. I have never liked, I'm taking PD off the screen. I don't know what happened. Um, I have never liked Taylor Swift ever at any point. I have never liked her music. I've never related to her music. I think a lot of her lyrics are basic and I know she connects with a lot. A lot of people connect with her music. I've never been one of those people. I have to switch her music when it comes on the radio. Um, I can't stand her music to be frank. It doesn't mean that I don't think she's talented and I don't think that she's successful. And Craig, I don't know if this is the hot take. Just because of her persona and how big of an icon she is and how much of a cultural influence she has, to me, she belongs with that group for that reason. I don't know if her talent belongs with, you know, the Elton Johns and the Lady Gagas in, in that sense, but I can't argue against, the, like her the, the career that she's right? created yeah yeah i mean by the time it's all said and done her sales are going to be right up there like top 10 all time but i'm with you leah i don't i honestly don't get it and i'm i'm not an anti-pop music person i've i've loved pop musicians in the past we, we just talked about madonna i th thought she created some incredible pop music and then later in her career like put out a an album ray of light that was just it was just plain brilliant it was good taylor swift's music is basic to me it's 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 pop music at its in its purest form. It's just formulaic. I I remember having this discussion with a, a former colleague, who I won't name, Paige Demakos, um, about <laughs> how Taylor Swift was just brilliant about how she reinvented herself all the time. And I'm like, what are you talking about? That's called marketing. She has people to do that for her. If you listen to the music, there's nothing particularly creative about Taylor's Taylor Swift's music. It's just pop music and it's pretty simple pop music. I'm glad it connects with a lot of people. I'm glad a lot of them like it. That's cool. You like whatever you want, but I don't know. I just, I don't think the music is that great. And I'm with you, Leah. I literally never listen to Taylor Swift and neither do my kids. We broke PD. Yeah. Literally broke me. And, yeah. And yeah, it's, it's two minutes. Uh, <laughs> a couple things, a couple of comments about Taylor in the uh, chat. Roaring Fork said, here's the problem with Taylor. It's always about her. Um, I mean, a lot I'm of artists wrong. are. Yeah. Uh, Nicholas said, T Swift can't touch any of these artists. She's carved out a good career for herself and deserves to be in the conversation, but she's not close. Um, also, Fernando said, PD ran off to start recording that PH Next pop album. That's where you went. Mm. And Elizabeth said, country Taylor Swift is better than pop Taylor Swift. I will say there are some like early Taylor Swift songs that I do appreciate. Uh, Nicholas said Taylor was a better, better as a country artist. I don't even like country, but modern pop music is far worse. I would agree. I would agree with so, that. So Leah, how do you feel about Harry Styles? Okay. So I saw someone mention watermelon sugar and like, and that's the thing. That's why I don't want to sit here on my high horse and say like, I hate Taylor Swift when I've gone to two Harry Styles concerts in the last year. <laughs> he was, I was a, I was like the biggest One Direction fan ever. And One Direction is like quintessential, you know, marketing pop nonsense. Um, so I do understand that. And like, that's why I don't want to be mean and I don't want to disparage like a woman who's carved out an amazing career for herself because you can make the same argument about Harry Styles too. So I don't want to sit on my yeah. high horse about it, but and some he's... other artists we've talked about here too, probably. Yeah. yeah. It's just, I mean, you, sometimes you connect with a pop artist. Sometimes you don't. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Joel asked me how I feel about the Biebs. Listen, I've been to a Justin Bieber concert. That's all I will say about that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I literally, everyone's like in our all city slack, everyone was talking about their favorite Taylor Swift songs from the new album. And I said, I will not be participating in this conversation. You will not catch me listening to a single one. Every TikTok that comes up about it, I say, this does not interest me. Get this off of my page. I want to mute her name on Twitter. I simply do not care. <laughs> and, uh, and to use her words, I did not want to be part of this narrative. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, I think yeah. I think Petey wanted to talk about the Glenn Miller band before we leave here. So. <laughs>
<laughs> PD, do you have any thoughts at all? And it's okay if you don't. He's just speechless nope. right now. Nope. No, okay. Say. No worries. No. Nope. Got nothing. Well, we uh, we had to have a fun conversation because we can't take. There's going to be a lot more six two Coyotes losses this season. Let's just say that. Um, and I will say, being here at home, sitting in my kitchen chair, it is nowhere near as comfortable as the chairs we sit in at our office, both to watch the game and to do our post-game shows. Um, our chairs are extremely comfortable, and they are from more furniture. I really need to get new chairs here in my own house because nothing is as comfortable as what we have at the studio, like I said. Um, so if you're looking for new furniture for your home, for your office, anything, check out More Furniture's fall sale at morefurniture.com. That's M-O-R furniture.com. And plus, you'll receive a $100 gift card for every $1,000 you spend. So that's a great deal right now if you're looking to do a little bit of redecorating heading into holiday season here. And to bring it back to the Coyotes, I'm steering our bus back to Coyotes Talk for one second. Uh, we'll take a look at the upcoming schedule for the Coyotes. We got Columbus on Tuesday to round out this six-game road trip. And then next Friday, that Coyotes home opener at Mullet Arena versus the Winnipeg Jets, 7.30 p.m. We hope to see you at Four Peaks before um, and if you don't have tickets to the game during the game. But any wins in next week? What do you think? Any, will the emotion of mullet maybe get a Coyotes win on Monday? Two Friday? thoughts. No chance in Columbus. The cannon's going to go off repeatedly because oh. it's just the way that started the off. The wretched last cannon. Year. So, yeah, Johnny Hockey. Yeah. I, yeah, PTSD from last year, I think. Yeah. So. so look out for that. And then and then the mullet, who we all have agreed. We love the mullet. We love the atmosphere of the mullet. You know who's never skated in the mullet or played in the mm. mullet? Or the literally coyotes? been inside the mullet? <laughs> The Coyotes and the on. Winnipeg Jets. <laughs> yeah, the Coyotes never been inside there without hard hats on. And most of their team's never been there. Never skated there. Never had their equipment there. Not a home game. Are you out of your mind? It's not a home game. Other than there'll be some home fans there and they'll have they'll come out for opening night through a, 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 you know, a big howling head with lights on it. It's not a home game. They've never been there before. So hopefully the fans can help push them over the edge because the experience of the building is going to be potentially a distraction for them. I, I don't know, and it, it's you're almost better off being the Winnipeg Jets here in, in, in situations. They got, they got nothing to lose. We're going to go out there, and yeah, it's fine. It's all new to them too. So it's, I'm concerned. I am, I am moderately concerned. I guess who plays next after Winnipeg? The New York Rangers. Heard yeah. of them? Have you heard of them? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. We'll sorry. See. We'll, so I don't we'll, know when we'll, that one's we'll, coming, but I said that we're before. Gonna, and By we're going to talk did, more. Did you see this? So now I can just put that on. Oh my God, you printed it out. I'm dead. Yeah, and my my color printer didn't work. So well, my computer went down. I've got it printed. So when it, next time you guys get on one of those rants, I can just go like that. So I'll keep it right here. That's amazing. Petey wanted no part of this pop music discussion. Wait, what am I going to say? I got, I'm, I'm going to Blink-182 in June. Where do they fit? <laughs> just saying. Get my tickets at game time. You're not, hey, you're not, you didn't go to the Lil Nas concert last night? Lil Nas X. Petey, you're not going yeah. to the Panic at the Disco concert tomorrow like night? Like Panic at the Disco, not going. But then I have to leave my yeah. house. Why would I leave my house if I don't have to? Like right here. <laughs> I'm staying right. If you if you see me somewhere, it's going to be at Safeway or oh, here. God. That's it. Or I'm, I won't Fair. have to go to work. Fair enough. Caleb I'll said PD has a home to. printer. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Also, um, someone it's asked earlier machine, where they could Caleb. see where they could see Sean's uh, Taylor Swift rant. Go on the PHNX Sports YouTube channel and watch Southwest Bias from yesterday. Uh, he really gets into it there. Um, and then also somebody uh, asked if I was a Jonas Brothers fan or a High School Musical fan. High School Musical was my first ever concert, and I've been to a Jonas Brothers concert as well. So I, that is all I will say. Joe Bros concert rocked. One of the uh, wow. fantastic performers. Took my kid who was then, I don't know, 9 or 10. They were very good performers. There yep. you go. Yep. Uh, last thing before we head out to the punch card, it one is. more punch <sighs> closer to draft day. Mm. Punch card results mm. do not guarantee first overall pick. Will we feel better after we get to the first row? Like, yes. Maybe. I don't know. It seems it's just daunting. It's just absolutely daunting that there's that many games left. When you're at this point of the season. <sighs> And knowing what's coming, and how Again, many games? like I said, there will be some bright spots. They'll they'll have some moments, but yeah. 
five down, five. 77 to go. Five games. And, and how about this? So how many? Is that five? Uh, it's five. Mm-hmm. Five. And they got one more at six. So six road games. on 14 consecutive road games coming up on the next year. 14. <sighs> Frequent flyer miles. Graham yeah. said it best. Sigh. Yeah, there we go. Couldn't have said it better myself. Anyway, <laughs> thank you all for tuning in uh, for both our hockey breakdown and our pop music breakdown. We appreciate everybody joining us, Pack Therapy, and we do it every single post game show, even for the next 77 games, win or loss. We will be here, so be sure to subscribe to the Peach and Sports YouTube channel, hit the notification bell so you never miss a show, and also wherever you get your podcast, like and subscribe and follow there. We have audio episodes that are just audio only weekly. So be sure to follow us along there and leave us a review. It really means a lot to us um, when you leave us either stars or a comment. It's really nice. And then you can also follow PHNX Sports across all social platforms, TikTok, Instagram. So if you're on any of those, check out PHNX Sports and on Twitter as well. And then follow us on Twitter at PHNX underscore Coyotes. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see our ats right now at Leah Merrill, at S. Peters Hockey, and at Craig S. Morgan. Any final thoughts before we end? I don't He's ready to go. I don't want to talk about this game. I got a prospect report coming next week, mailbag coming next week, and then the first game at Mullet. Yep. And all yep. that implies, not just from a Coyotes perspective, but from a league and NHLPA perspective. Yep. And we'll talk more about that as well. So become a member at gophnx.com to read all of Craig's stories, grab a shirt from the PHNX locker, and join our members only Discord. Great time of year to become a member with basketball, hockey, football, all of it's in action. So HKTDD, that's all I got to say. If you know, you know. We'll see everybody. We have an audio episode on Monday, live Tuesday for the post-game show against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Until then, enjoy the rest of your weekend, everyone.